Isn't the name of Jesus wonderful? Isn't the name of Jesus wonderful? All the world can come to him and have their sins removed. Isn't the name of Jesus wonderful? Oh, isn't the name of Jesus beautiful? Isn't the name of Jesus beautiful? Holy Son of God and one of us, the lover of our souls, isn't the name of Jesus There is 
no other name but Jesus. Jesus. There is freedom in the name. There's healing in the name. There is power in the name. Oh, salvation in the name. There is life in the name. Oh, there is no other Oh, yeah. 
name's Nevaeh. And my name's Layla. And, and this, this is, is the, the couch. couch. <laughs> Welcome to the couch, where imperfect people give imperfect announcements. Tomorrow, February 15th, our t-shirt shop closes. Closes! You can't get it Tuesday, you gotta get it Monday. Women's Prayer is this Tuesday at 5.30 a.m. Now that could change because of our <laughs> current weather. Now that could change because of our current weather situation. So stay tuned for T- Ha. Ah. TC text. T I was about to say TSM, sorry. <laughs> TC text. TC text and what? So stay tuned to TC text and social media. Chin tryouts. Mm, say it. Do you just want me to say it? Yeah. No, I'll say it. This Saturday, February, February. <laughs> Let me say it. This Saturday. <laughs> can't do no good. <laughs> this Saturday, February 20th at 10.30 a.m., we are having Truth Praise Musician tryouts. But uh, no, no, no. <laughs> so Next Sunday, February 21st, we are starting our new class called Deeper Life. <sighs> I gotta swallow my spit. What do I do? Deeper Life. <laughs> you just look that. at the camera and smile. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> deeper Life dives deeper into the Word of God to help understand and develop deeper biblical lifestyle convictions. February 28th is our Share Sunday and our Heritage Sunday. What's Heritage Sunday? Heritage Sunday is an ode to the past. Bobby's. <laughs> and Brother Bobby, Bobby <laughs> Stanley. Bobby. Brother, Brother Bobby. Bob, <laughs> Brother Bobby, Bobby Stanley will be preaching. We're going to be hearing some old songs and be hearing Brother Bobby Stanley preaching. That's, That's all for the couch today. today. See you guys later. Thank you for enjoying the couch this morning. Uh, hope that information got to you as well as possible. A couple more things that we want to talk to you about today before we enter a time of giving, and that information will come up on the screen here in just a moment. Uh, but we want to encourage you, if you have not yet made a commitment to Transform Truth, make sure that you do that. Uh, you should be receiving an email here in just a moment and an email and a text that will give you the opportunity to give today. If you would, I want us to lift our voices right now in your living room, lift your voices here in this room today, and let's ask God to bless us all across this place today. Lord, we thank you and we honor you for your goodness and your mercy and your power. Lord, I'm asking that you would touch every spirit and every heart, Lord, that is listening and watching today in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, those that are going to bring gifts today, those that are going to give gifts today online, bless those homes, bless those finances and those health in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Lord, keep people safe during this time, Lord, as they travel, Lord, to and fro stores and going wherever they go. Lord, I pray that you'd keep people safe in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, my hope is that people, Lord, would feel welcome. Feel welcome, Lord, in their homes. Feel welcome to our church, Lord, to what you're trying to do in their life today. Lord, let this message that's going to be delivered this morning, let it change, let it transform, and let it renew those that need renewing. We honor you today, and we give you praise, and we thank you, God, for this opportunity to give. In Jesus' name, and everybody say amen. Today, I encourage you to worship. I encourage you to lift your hands. I encourage you to get with the preacher today and believe that God's going to do a transformation in your life. Give cheer. Praise the Lord. This morning we're going to get right into the Word of God. If you have your Bibles, I encourage you to get those uh, ready this morning, and we're going to allow God to speak into our life. I know that there are many people uh, that are in need of prayer today, so before we do get into the Word of God, we are going to go before the Lord together and ask Him to heal and touch and transform uh, give you an update on Sister Ginger, our uh, first lady here at Truth Church, my wife. Uh, she is doing a little better, uh, still uh, un unexplainable fevers. Um, also, many of you know 
uh, an elder of our church, Sister Pam Walker. She is uh, not doing well today, but I serve a God that is great and greatly to be praised and can do all things. And so I want us to pray for her and also our bishop, Bishop Gilbert. He is in town, and he is uh, about to be undergoing a little bit more exercise and, and uh, help to get better from his heart surgery. And so he is in town, and, and I'm believing God's going to continue to bless him. But if you have your need today, if you have that need, you knew it, and God knew it before you even thought to ask, I want you to lift that need to the Lord right now, and I want us to go before the Lord together in prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are faithful. And you are just to forgive all sins. Lord, you are still today in 2021, on this February Valentine's Day, you are still the healer. You can still do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or even think. And Lord, I'm asking you today to do that kind of work in the lives of every person under the sound of my voice. In the name of Jesus Christ, go into homes today, Lord, and begin to minister to lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, touch Bishop Gilbert today. Touch my wife, Sister Ginger today. Lord, Sister Pam, and every need that was lifted, Lord, in homes this morning, we know that you're able and you're faithful, Lord, and you're a healing God. And I'm asking, Lord, that you would bring that healing virtue into their homes today, into hospital rooms today, wherever the ailment is. Lord, heal that body. Lord, by your stripes, we are and we were healed. And I declare that word over those lives today. And I give you praise and I give you honor. We give you praise and we give you honor today for all that you've done and all that you will continue to do in Jesus' name and say amen. Amen, amen, amen. We're going to go to Psalms today, as you can probably recall. If not, I encourage you to go to our YouTube channel and watch last week's service. We began, uh, did not mean to begin, but we began a series. And today we're going to continue that series, a Deep Calling unto deep, deep calling unto deep. If I could turn your attention uh, to your Bibles this morning, we're going to go to Psalms, Psalms, the first Psalm. We're going to read six verses of Scripture, and we will focus today on verse 1, but we will read the entirety of verses 1 through 6. It says this, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Deeper or deep calleth unto deep the way of the righteous. Psalms 1 may be regarded as the preface psalm that introduced the theme of the entire book to teach the way to the blessedness and to warn us against the terrible destruction of sinners. The first word, blessed. Somebody say blessed there in your home this morning. Blessed is an all-encompassing description of the reward of the righteous. Would you say it with me? The way of the righteous. The way of the righteous. It conveys the, sa the same idea as the word used by Jesus in his great sermon on the mount and the promise given to the faithful in the seven churches of Asia in the book of Revelation. The original word is plural and indicates the promise of a multiplicity. Somebody say a multiplicity. A multiplicity of blessings to those who will walk 
in the way of the righteous. If I could just pause for a moment and tell you the way of the righteous, if there is just an idea of a multitude of blessings, a magnitude, if you will, of blessings. And somebody told me, if you walk right, if you live right, if you do right, you're going to be blessed. And guess what? I want to do that. I want to be blessed. I want to make sure that I live right. I want to make sure that I don't do the things that my flesh wants to do because according to the Word of God, it tells me that my flesh is wicked. It tells me that my flesh is weak and my flesh doesn't want to do the things that God wants me to do. So if I know all of that stuff, then if anybody could just explain to me that, hey, the way of the righteous, there's a multitude of blessings, then I want to live that way. And so I'm just saying today, that's what I want to do. Just because of the little bit of knowledge that I have from this black book, knowing that my flesh is wicked, but I've been told from also from the Word of God that the way of the righteous there's blessings that come, then guess what? I want the blessings. I'm not living for the blessings, but I want those blessings. If I don't have to go through mess, if I don't have to go through trials all by myself and alone, then I don't want to do that. I want to go to where the blessing is. And I understand from his word that the righteous are going to be in judgment. The righteous are going to get to be with him in paradise someday. So I want to, in Jesus' name, live for him in a right way. Can somebody say amen today? Praise God. There are three things that I want to talk to us about in Psalms 1 and verse 1. That the righteous, somebody say the righteous, the righteous person has to do or does rather. The righteous, hear me this morning, do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Counsel is beneficial to all people, Solomon said. Listen to what it says in Proverbs 11 and verse 14. Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. But counsel, but counsel is only helpful when it is given. I said this last week and I'll reiterate it again. It's only beneficial and it's only good when it comes from those that are godly advisors, if you will. There are individuals that are praying. There are individuals that are studying to show themselves approved. They're not individuals that are picking it off the shelf. Here's some advice for you. But they've picked it off of the shelf of the Word of God. And they've said, listen, this is what you should do. This is what the Bible declares that you should do. This is not my opinion. This is not what I want to tell you to do. This is what God's Word, this is what God tells you to do. So it better be, you better understand that who you listen to is very important. That's the way of the righteous. I want to listen to godly counsel. I want to listen to godly people. I've said it before, and I encourage you to hear what I'm telling you this morning. You better be careful who you listen to. You better be careful what messages you listen to or what music that you listen to or, or what counselors that you listen to in this secular world. You want to make sure that they have been in the Word and the Word is coming out of their mouth and not their own opinions. The righteous seek counsel, but they discriminate in their choices of counselors. It's all right to discrim discriminate when you're listening to counsel. There's some that you might just want to, you want to be like that little kid that doesn't want to listen to mama. Stick your fingers in your ear and la, 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 la. Don't listen to some stuff. But listen to counselors that give you godly biblical counter. Somebody say the way of the righteous. The way of the righteous. Someone has said advice is cheap. Almost everyone has an opinion these days. In the modern media, advice programs and columns, they abound. And people, they listen to these things. And they're, they, they listen to people's problems. And they listen to people's issues. And they listen to all of these things. And they give their suggestions. And they don't give sound biblical advice. And much of the time, these individuals that give this, this advice, they give these uh, insights, if you will. It's a humanistic. It's a philosophy of their own. It's not something that has come from Jesus Christ. It's completely contrary from God and His Word. And I encourage you today, there's no solution in that. 
You're not going to find any solution. You're not going to find any help. Only The only true solution that you can get for any issue and any life's problem comes through counsel that is based on the Word of God. And the righteous must have a good knowledge of the Bible so they can discriminate wisely. That's why you've heard me say it time and time and time again. Don't take Pastor Darren's word for it, but study to show yourself approved. Make sure that you're studying the Word of God because when you're studying the Word of God, when you hear something that is contrary to the Word of God, you can give a a right discrimination, if you will, a proper discrimination. No, 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 no. That's not right. No, I don't need to hear that. What I need to listen to is listen to this because this is equal with or or right upon the Word of God. It's line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. So counsel, counsel needs to come from the Word of God. There are many devices in man's heart, the Bible says. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall Stand Proverbs 19 and verse 21. I want to read that again. There are many devices in, the, in man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. Do you hear what I'm telling you this morning? We're talking about the way of the righteous. The counsel of the Lord is going to stand. Philosophies and things of this world are going to pass away. But the counsel of the Lord, it is going to stand firm in this last and closing hour. Through the ages, many people have listened to the counsel of the ungodly and suffered the consequences of wrong choices. The Bible is littered with these particular stories. We know of some. Eve Eve listened to the counsel of the serpent in Genesis 3. And when she was in the garden, and that counsel was not good counsel. Oh, yes, you'll get this knowledge. Yes, you can be like this and you can be like that. And she listened to that counsel. And we understand that the story tells us that she was banished from the garden. They were, you have to get out of here. They found out that they were naked. All of these things that they shouldn't have done begin to transpire because they listened to wrong counsel. Rehoboam listened to his friends and oppressed God's people, ultimately losing the kingdom in King, 1 Kings chapter 12. And so I encourage you today, if we are going to be what God desires us to be, we must listen to wise counsel. The Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Don't listen to the counsel of the ungodly. Don't turn it on the sitcom and listen to the sitcom and let anybody that's out there in this world give you the counsel that you need. If I could just stop for a moment. If you're a brother, you're a sister in the Lord and you're in this church and there's issues and problems in the family, don't reach for counsel somewhere else. Listen to counsel from the Word of God. Listen to a brother or a sister that has been counseling with God and has been praying. That's why we need to understand when the Bible says, bear ye one another those burdens to so fulfill the law of Christ. I'm not saying saying, air your dirty laundry, but I am saying to grab the hand of someone that you know is in prayer, that you know it has a relationship with God, and say, help me as I go through this problem. Help me in prayer. Help me in biblical counsel that I may be what God wants me to be and not listen to the ways of this world. Oh, somebody say amen this morning. Praise God. Praise God. The Bible then says to stand, standeth in the way of sinners. Not only is a person not to walk in the way of the ungodly counsel, neither is he to stand in the way of a sinner. Walking seems to depict a counsel, a casual activity, if you will, and even suggest an impromptu encounter. You're walking this direction and then you see something and you're around somebody. It's not something that you plan to do. It's not something that you desire to do. While standing involves a more focused and an engaged communication. The righteous refuse to fellowship with sinners with unguarded caution. For fellowship is an intimate, somebody say intimate, It's an intimate occasion. It's an intimate communication. It's an intimate time without 
reluctant. Christians befriend and they want to be kind to and they want to witness to the sinner and they want to pray for them. But you do not want to be in an intimate encounter, an intimate place because it is impossible to please God if you are constantly in that place and you're walking and you're standing and you're, you've been there beside them for so long and they are influencing you and you are not influencing them. And so I encourage you today to be careful and be guarded where you are standing. The basic philosophy of a Christian is worlds. It is polar opposite of a sinner. Understand me this morning. I'm not saying that sinners are not important and we need to shun sinners and get them out of here. No, that is not what I'm saying today. And if you're listening today and you're what, you may feel conviction or you may feel like, man, I, why did I get on this YouTube channel? No, no, listen to me. I'm not saying that I am shunning you. I want to befriend you and I want to tell you about the good things of God and I myself want to be in the Word so I cannot give you Darren Gilbert's counsel, but I can give you godly counsel and we can be friends in the Lord one of these wonderful days. And so I'm not telling you that you need to run away for this church and this place that we are at right now is a soul-saving station. This YouTube channel, quite frankly, is a soul-saving location. And I want you to find salvation. I want you to find truth. I want you to find what God has graciously given me because it's a free gift for anybody, whosoever will hear and listen and receive that word into their life. So I'm not banishing and getting don't don't ever be around I'm just saying we can't stand in the way of sinners because a Christian life a Christian lifestyle is worlds apart from that of this sinful world the old saying is this and it's very true birds of a feather flock together those who have similar interests draw together and those who are opposite have opposite interests rather they find it difficult to be in common communication they find it difficult to find that common common ground if you will christians must find a social balance with sinners as they reach for their soul so if you're a part of true church today understand our hope and our prayer is to love god serve others live for god and share with others so don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not saying that you shun the sinner. I'm saying you open your arms to the sinner and say, Come unto me, all you that are weary and heavy laden, and let the God that I serve give you rest and give you peace that passeth all understanding, gives you joy unspeakable and full of glory. I am telling you to do that, but I'm also telling you to be careful where you stand. I'm telling you to be careful who your friends are. Every time we baptize someone in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ and they repent and they turn away from the lifestyle that they're living and they start going toward God, we tell them it's going to be different for you and it should be different for you. You've repented. You're not going to hang around the people you used to hang around. You're not going to have the same values that you used to have because God is changing you and we must let him change us. So if we're going to be where God wants us to be and we're going to live how God wants us to live. It is important, it is important, ladies and gentlemen, that our relationship with him is intimate and the relationship with this world is foreign to us and anything that has to do with the world. Jesus said, if in John 15 and verse 19, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, listen to that, because ye are not of the world. You've been bought with a price. You've been changed. You've been transformed. You've been baptized in the wonderful, the only saving name, Jesus Christ. Because you're not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hateth you. So if I can just stop for a moment, that's why the way of the righteous doesn't stand in the way of the sinner. That's why the way of the righteous doesn't stand in the way of the ungodly. We don't get around that. We don't get intimate with that. Why? Because the world hates us. I'm not saying the individual friend hates you, but this 
age that we live in, the adversary that goes about as a roaring lion hates the righteous. And because you've given yourself over to God, he hates you and he'll do whatever he can do, possibly do, to get just an inroad into your heart and your spirit. So it is important today that you hear this preacher as I tell you, do not stand in the way of the ungodly. Run from it. Get away from it. Wrap your arms around this word and say, i got to hide the word in my heart. i got to be passionate about living for God. I got to make sure I'm in the church whenever the doors are open. I got to listen to every message. I got to make sure God is living in my heart because this world and the age that we live in hates the righteous. Somebody say the way of the righteous in your living room this morning. Our relationship with the sinner should be one of witnessing and of positive influence. Now I'm going to say something that a lot of people might hair on the back of their neck might stand up, but if it's a positive influence, and I know that I'm going to say this, and it might be recorded and put all over the internet, but that's okay, because I believe this. I believe it passionately, and I've had conversation recently about this very thing. If we are going to have a relationship with the sinner, we should, we should be a witness, and we should have a positive influence. So what does that mean, ladies and gentlemen, that are listening to me on this Sunday morning? That means this. That means that you can't say, you're going to hell. You're no good. I'm going to heaven, you're going to hell. Or, hey, you better get right, because if you don't get right, you're going straight to hell. Let me tell you something. Though those words may be true, though those things that you're saying might be true, you have to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove and being positive to them and saying this, you should say, listen, I want to show you the way because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And if I wouldn't have found the saving grace of Jesus Christ, if I wouldn't have found the waters of baptism, if I wouldn't have found the church that I go to that preached the truth and shared the truth in love, I too would be lost and going to a devil's hell. So let me help you find the truth. Let me just show you something. If they receive it, great. If they don't receive it, that's hurt and it's brokenness in your spirit. But what you must do is share the truth with a loving heart and a loving heart. Spirit, be a positive influence. Don't be a negative influence. Our relationship with the sinner should be one of witnessing and a positive influence. If they began to influence us, however, the relationship is unbiblical. The relationship is out of the will of God. And you are then standing in the way of the ungodly. So I encourage you, if we are going to be righteous if we're going to live for God, if we're going to walk in the way of the righteous, we must be the influencer and not be influenced by this age and this world and the people that we come in contact with. Young people, I hope that you're hearing me this morning. It is important that you are the influencer of righteous, righteousness and truth. Mom and dad, worker that's in the house today, hear me this morning. You must be the influencer of the word of God and not be influenced by this world in this age. And lastly, and I'm hurrying, coming quickly to a close this morning, to sit in the seat of the scornful. Sitting indicates more than a quick visit. It implies an intimate, prolonged fellowship. A Christian sitting in a place of a scornful criticism, a mocking, a a thought process of this is what I think should happen and this is how I think it should be and they're doing it wrong and this person's wrong. What happens is that is an ungodly thought process, an ungodly counsel. You must make sure, you must make sure and be pure in your thoughts. I'm not being scornful. I'm not going to to be in this thought process of I feel like this and I feel like that and they're wrong and I'm right. No, no, you can't be criticized if you will. What you must do is with a godly conscience and a godly spirit say the things that you need to say and do it righteously and do it with a wholesome heart. One thing is clear. It is not a place for the righteous to abide in a relationship or in a place of ungodly counsel, an inappropriate relationship with this sinful world. We do not need to be a part of that. We do not need to be a part of 
the scornful or the criticism or the mocking or anything of that nature. We are living in a day, hear me this morning, we are living in a day of extreme cynicism. The spirit of this age tends to ridicule those in position of leadership. It happens on the news. It happens in the community. It happens on the sitcoms. Every father from I don't even know when until now has been demolished, has been put down. And therefore, it has caused the thought process about leadership in the home to be diminished. So this age, this cynicism, this thought process, this the spirit of the age that ridicules and tears down the position of leadership, is, it is not a godly place to be in. It is much easier to sit and criticize others than to get up and do something positive that will affect change. And I am telling somebody that's sitting on your couch or standing in your living room today that we must stand and we must be positive about living for God and sharing the truth and telling somebody that they can make it in this last and this closing hour. The righteous, somebody say the righteous. The righteous do not engage in malicious mocking of others. The righteous do not engage in making fun of those in leadership and those that are supposed to be the head of the home. No, it can't be of that nature. The path of the scornful is a downhill slide. Many of you today will enjoy going to a hill somewhere and you'll be on your sled or be on your piece of cardboard and you'll slide rapidly down that hill. If you are on the path of the scornful, it will not be a fun one like you will experience today. A downhill slide to destruction for any Christian and any believer if you are on the path of a scornful individual. The Christian should avoid that. Solomon, the wise man, had much to say about the scorner. Proverbs 24, I encourage you to get your Bibles as I close right now. And it says this, a wise son heareth his father. Hear that today. A wise son heareth his father's instruction, but the scorner heareth not rebuke. Proverbs 13 and verse 1, however. Proverbs 24 and verse 9, the scorner is an abomination to a man. What? I encourage you to go study the word abomination. I don't want to be a scorner. I don't want to live in that thought process or that mindset. I do not want to have that kind of lifestyle. Proverbs 19 and verse 29, if you would stand to your feet in your living room right now. Judgments, judgments are prepared for scorners and stripes for the back of fools. I'm talking about on this Valentine Sunday, the way of the righteous. I'm speaking to you today about deep calling unto deep. What is the way of the righteous? What are we talking about? Every area of our life, we must get in order, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. We must get every I dotted and every T crossed because why, church? Why guess that's listening today? Because he's coming back for a church. He's coming back for an individual that has made himself ready. We can't just frolic, frolic through life and go through life and tiptoe through the tulips like everything is going to be okay. No, we have to work while it is yet day. we got to get ready today for tomorrow. God is coming back. The, the next day he could be here. We don't know the day. We don't know the hour. But he's coming quickly. And so I encourage you today, as deep, call it unto deep, as the way of the righteous is saying we got to be right. We can't live in the way of the sinner. We can't walk with sinners. We can't walk with counsel that is ungodly. We can't be with ungodly individuals, but we have to be the example. We have to be the one that tells the truth. We have to be the one that doesn't stand in the way of sinners or sitteth in the seat of the scornful. We can't make our bed there and our relationships there. We must live for God. So what's the message for today, church? 
message for today is be careful who your company is. Be careful who you listen to. Be careful who you sit with and you counsel with. Make sure you're the influencer and not the influenced. Young people, make sure that you are the influencer and not the influence. And make sure as you influence and make sure as you give counsel, that you don't give your opinions. You give the opinion of the Word of God. Would you lift your hands all across this building right now? Would you lift your hands in your home right now? In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, would you move in the lives and the hearts of every individual that's in this place, Lord? Would you move in the lives and the hearts of every individual in their home? In the name of Jesus, we want to be a righteous people. Lord, men and women that are listening for the first time, we want to live a righteous life. We want to live a wholesome life that is true and is faithful to you, that lives for you on Sunday and lives for you Monday through Friday and Saturday and back again on Sunday, oh God. I do not want to walk in the way of the ungodly. I don't want to listen to ungodly counsel, Lord. I don't want to sit in the seat of the scornful, but Lord, I want to be righteous. I want to be holy. Your word declares in verse 6, for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So Lord, it is of, it is of salvation today. It is speaking of salvation today. If I am doing any of those things in verse 1, then, Lord, I'm not living for you. Then, Lord, I'm not doing what you desire me to do. And so I'm asking, Lord, if there's anybody that's listening and watching this morning, they want to repent, God, let them repent today. Let them lift their hands and say, God, forgive me of all my sins. Lord, I, I am turning away from this lifestyle of the scornful, this lifestyle of what I want to do, of ungodly counsel, Lord. And I am going to hear the counsel of truth. And I will not stand in the way of sinners. And Lord, I am going to do what you desire me to do. And Lord, I'm praying that today that somebody would want to be baptized in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, the only saving name, and their life would be forever transformed. One more time in your living room, would you lift your hands unto the Lord right now? In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for your power today. We thank the Lord for the demonstration of your spirit that I trust will be evident in every home that is listening this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, let your power, Lord, reign in this house today. Let your power reign in homes this morning. In Jesus' name, we honor you, we worship you, and we give you thanksgiving. In Jesus' name.